about to read for you an article from the Dublin Penny Journal, volume 2, number 96, published on the 3rd of May, 1834. It's called Ancient Irish Bards, and it goes like this. The Olivon Ray Dan, or Bards of the Ancient Irish, were panegyrists or rhapsodists, in whom the character of the troubadour and jongleur of Provence seemed to have been united. Each chieftain entertained in his castle one of these individuals who, while he, his family and guests were assembled in the great hall, around the groaning board, recited in verse, to the accompaniment of his harp, the praises of his patron's ancestors, or the compositions of the ancient bards from whom he was himself descended. Sometimes the subjects of his songs, like many of Homer's narrations, were founded on hints taken from extravagant tales propagated long before his time. Sometimes they were founded on facts, and often extemporaneous effusions of wit and humour flowed abundantly from him. As the bards, whose persons were deemed sacred, sometimes indulged in satire and invective, they held the nobles in much awe and gifts were occasionally bestowed on them to keep their, quote, muse in good humour. The influence of their rhymes, too, as well as the boldness with which they poured them forth on all occasions, was most astonishing, and may well be illustrated by the following anecdote. When the Earl of Kildare, while Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, was summoned by King Henry VIII to England, to answer certain charges brought against him, he entrusted the administration to his son, Lord Thomas. A rumour spread soon after the Earl's departure that he had been executed in the tower and that his whole family were threatened with the royal vengeance. This rash young man, by the advice of his associates, determined on revenging the injuries of his family. While Cromer who was both primate and chancellor, was pathetically representing to him the rashness, weakness, and iniquity of his intended enterprise. In a council assembled in St. Mary's Abbey, Dublin, Neilan, a bard, who waited in his train, rhymes the praises of the Lord Thomas, extolling his greatness, chiding his delay, and calling upon him to take immediate revenge in the field for the injuries of his family. The effusions of this ignorant and heated rhapsodist had, unhappily, a greater influence than the sage counsels of the prelate, and the young Geraldine rushed forth at the head of his Irish train. What follows is a poem that is also included in the article. It's titled, Conmar. He rushed to the field and his helmet's dark gloom triumphantly waved in the air, and that brow, which a joy smile could scarcely illume, was bent by the fiercest expression of gloom. Revenge reigned predominant there. And proudly his war courser dashed o'er the plain as wild as the white crested wave. He foamed with impatience, he struggled in vain, and he seemed as if sharing the haughty disdain of Conmar the fearless and brave. The mien of the chieftain was graceful to hear the clang of the bright flashing steel. Was the music he loved, it fell light on his ear, and he cried as he brandished his gore crimson spear, The foeman my vengeance shall feel. As the mountain blast swift through the battle he flew, destruction and death in his train, the war fiend his trumpet exultingly blew, and feasted his blood loving eyes with the view of the vanquished who lay on the plain. And loud was the din of the deep peeling gun that scattered the foe in its ire. Helmets and banners gleam bright as the sun, when he flings his young rays as his course is begun, and gilds the broad landscape with fire. The warrior had gazed on his vassals of might, the valiant, the wild and the rude, as they swept torrent-like o'er the field, a faint light shone round his dark features as he sprang through the fight and fell, nobly fell, unsubdued. 
he writhed not, he spoke not, but from his sunk eye dashed off a bright spot of his gore. He heard a shout, wild as the Indian cry, "'Twas victory! His mailed armed he raised up on high, and the chief of his clan was no more. And that was the article called Ancient Irish Bards from the Dublin Penny Journal, Volume 2, Number 96, published in 1834.